What's up guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Judah and in today's video we are going to be doing my March wrap up. So excuse my hair right now, it's kind of goofy, I need a haircut, like badly, but it's okay, it's okay, just excuse it, don't, don't pay attention to it. <laughs> so this month I read... Oh, I forgot how many books I read. Let me check how many books I read. We read nine books with one DNF, so eight and a half, but we're just gonna say nine. I'm honestly shocked with the nine. Like, I'm shocked, but not shocked. So, during this month, we filmed a 24 hour readathon. And so, obviously, I got some reading done during that. But near the end of the month, I started to get into a reading slump, which I'm glad to say I am starting to get out of. So, yay. To start off the month, I read Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. This is the second book in the Ark of a Scythe series. I still have not finished the series, even though there's only three books and one novella, but it's the size of books, so we're just gonna say four books for it. I only read this one this month because I honestly am so scared for The Toll, which is the third book. I've started it, but I'm nowhere near finishing it. This series revolves around uh, two characters as the main characters. A girl named Citra is, I think, how you say her name, and a guy named Rowan. I don't know if I'm pronouncing these names right, but it's okay. This is a dystopian, so they're in a futuristic world, a futuristic society, where they have solved the problem of death, so basically you can't die. But, 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 but... For population control and population purposes, they appoint these people called scythes, who basically, they have to kill people. They have to kill a certain amount of people, it's called like the quota, by a certain time each year. So yeah, and Rowan and Citra are taken on as scythe apprentices. That's basically the setting of the first one, and then we have the second one, which I can't really say anything about it without spoiling the first one and this one kind of that's all we're really gonna say about it the next book i read was keeper of the lost cities by shannon messenger the series got me into reading i love the series um this time through i started annotating it which was really fun i love my annotatedness i don't know if you can see that but like look it's so fun it's so fun to me i also annotated this one oh one thing i did forget to say about this book was it was super sad so yeah just that in mind when you read it back to the keeper series i actually read the first three books in this series so yeah i'm just gonna rate them all together because i'm not gonna split up the series right okay so five stars five stars five stars i rated them all five stars i rated these before my days of rating became more in depth so yeah they're all just staying at the five stars because they got me into reading basically this series revolves around a girl named sophie foster and basically sophie one day is visited by someone named Fitzfacker and he tells her that basically her whole life's been a lie and she is not human. She is what they would call an elf. Not like the Christmas elves, but more like they have these things called special abilities where they can like do certain things and Sophie is a telepath. And basically this book is about her learning her new life and getting used to it. But then we have these books and then there's lots more books and still another book coming out this year where she is basically going against this rebel group who is against her and yeah that's i'm trying not to spoil it because i don't want to spoil it so i'm keeping you on a cliffhanger kind of not really a cliffhanger but kind of a cliffhanger and you can just go read them for yourself highly recommend it to you the next book that i read was the outsiders okay so just for some backstory this month i filmed a 24-hour readathon out on my youtube channel go check it out fun fact i tried to film one the night before the 24-hour readathon that i had posted and that's when i read this book i read it in one sitting and you know yeah you know i rated it three star let me check actually what i rated it i forgot <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a lot of forgetting. Um, I rated this one three stars. I was right. And the reason for the three stars was because I was just not invested in the story, right? I wasn't, like, I was like, yeah, these characters, I was reading, I knew what was going on the entire time. But I wasn't really invested and I didn't really feel connected to the characters at all. But 
come the end when something super sad happens, I'm not saying what, because that would be a spoiler, but you know, it broke me. I'll even put up a picture of me reading this book that I took for some very strange reason. Basically, this is a 1980s type book thing. It was giving me Cobra Kai even though there's no karate really involved in this, but it was like giving me the vibe of Cobra Kai, I mean Karate Kid, sorry Cobra Kai is now. It was giving me Karate Kid vibes, probably because it was from that time. There was like two different groups, I don't really remember this book a whole lot, I just remember certain things of it. The main character's name is Pony Boy, which is strange, but it's okay. Basically, a lot of things are going down, hands are being thrown, there's fights breaking out in this book. I mean, I recommend it. I think there's a movie too. Um, but I recommend this book to those who like 1980s, late 1900s type things. The next book that I started was The Summer of Broken Rules by Kale Walder. Basically, I DNF'd this book. So here's the reason for DNFing the book. It was clean. There was no spice, at least to the point where I was, and I've heard there's no spice in it. But it was weird because, like, this one girl was, like, sleeping over at this other guy's place where they were. And so that's why I DNF'd it because it was getting really weird. That, would, that, that just weirded me out. And then there was also a lot of F-bombs in it. So I was like, no thanks. I don't like the F-word. Not a huge fan of it. I hope you aren't a huge fan of it, I guess. We put that book down. We might pick it up later when I'm older, more mature. I guess. I love the plot, though. I love the plot. If I finished it, I probably would earn around a four stars, but as you can tell, if you can see that, I gave it no rating on Goodreads. They should make a DNF section for it. What it's about is they're all getting ready for a wedding. I don't know. I don't remember their names. Who's getting married, but the main character is not getting married. The main character's name is Meredith, um, and they're all at Martha's Vineyard, and since they're preparing for the wedding, it's the wedding week and everything, they decided to play a game of Assassins, which if you don't know what Assassins is, it is where there, there are, there's a person in charge of all of it, and they give you a person where you have to basically, in this book they played with water guns so no one's actually dying. And so yeah, basically you're assigned a person and you have to get them, like shoot them with the water gun, pew pew. And then you basically, whoever you take out, you get their, their person and you have to take them out and then basically gets down to one. And so yeah, that's basically what's happening throughout this entire book. And the guy's name is... Okay, so it doesn't say the guy's name, but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, basically they team up and are going after everyone. And they're just meeting for the first time because he's on like the groom's side or the bride's side, I forget. And she's on the groom, she's on the opposite family side and that's how they meet. And yeah, there's a lot of emotional stuff in this because it says this in the summary so it's not a spoiler but Meredith's sister had died like a year before I think so basically she's dealing with all those emotions still and like trying to do that there's just that like emotional value build up in that so yeah the next book that I read was Blade of Secrets by Tricia 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 I think Levenseller it is in a duology the Bladesmith duology and I rated it a four and a half stars it's about an 18 year old named Ziva and she is blacksmith and hint the name the book Blade of Secrets and Blacksmith Trilogy or the Bladesmith whatever um and so basically she's very introverted does not like talking to people her parents are dead and she lives with her sister what's your sister's name I'm not really good with the names in books okay I don't think your sister's name is this but anyway one day she is asked to create um a super powerful weapon because this is a fantasy taking the fact that this is a fantasy so there's magic and all that and basically she has a gift where when she creates something it's magical like so she whenever she creates like let's say it's a mace it's a bow it's arrows it's a blade it has all it has a set, different ability every time and so one day this i think it's like the war master or whatever comes to her and asks her for a powerful weapon because she's heard that she can make really powerful weapons so ziva she goes and she makes a blade and basically this blade um whoever it's like stabs or whatever not really stabs like cuts um you get to hear their secrets and so basically ziva hears the oh the warlord that's her name that's her title the girl that comes and wants the blade warlord basically ziva hears her i don't know if i explained the blade right but that's how i think it went if not something with the blade told you its secrets and basically ziva heard the warlord's secrets and she was going to enslave the entire kingdom and so ziva basically has to go on this mission thing and it's a romantic to see 
yeah. I also read the second book in this series, which I can't really say much about that because the first one ends on a cliffhanger. Those were about the Blade of Secrets, and the second book was called Master of Iron, and those were both by Trisha Levenshire. So, yeah. The second one I rated three stars. The second one revolved more around the romance, so I didn't really like it as much because the romance wasn't just... It, it wasn't super interesting to me, but I mean, it was a good romance story. It was good, um, good, good plot, but like, it was way, way more about the romance, and I didn't really care about that, so I didn't enjoy the second book as much. The last book that I read in March, I actually started way back when because this book was for school, and that book was Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Basically, I did not hate this story. I rated it a 3.5 stars. I know, shocking. It's a very good piece of literature and very classic. Um, the reason it's a 3.5 stars is because, you know, it's, we actually talked about this in my English class, it's meant for people in like, it's meant for like juniors. Like, that's the big understanding level of it so if you understand it you're a very high level reader um i am not a very high level reader so it took me a while longer to read and to understand it i often had to reread pages in it but i liked it i also did not like how it ended how the romance ended because uh yeah the romance between darcy and alicy bennett but anyway the plot is plot to set the stage for you all the main character of this book is elizabeth bennett also known as liza and lizzie and basically she has four sisters i think jane kitty lydia mary four sisters she is the second one lizzie is the second sister basically this book is based in the old 1800 1700 1800 all they're worried about is getting a husband because women didn't really work back then and so they were worried about getting a husband that was rich and so that's what their mom was worried about the entire book my daughter's a husband get them a husband that's rich get them a husband that is wealthy their mother is actually my favorite character because she is the most funny character I've read in a while, mainly because of how unfiltered she is. She's really unfiltered. She doesn't really have a filter, and it's really, really funny. To start off the book, a guy named Bingley moves into Netherfield, which is an estate, and they're super excited about that because he's super wealthy, makes a lot of money a year, and so they meet Bingley and everything, and he hits it off with Jane, the older sister, right? And Bingley has a friend named Darcy, and, well, Mr. Darcy, I guess. But I'm saying their last names, for the guys because I don't really remember their first names because it doesn't really say the much. So yeah, Darcy is Bingley's like best friend and Darcy is the opposite of Bingley. Bingley is this super extroverted, kind, caring, understanding person and Darcy is this very, I wouldn't want to say introverted because he's not necessarily introverted but he's not a people person. He doesn't rub people the right way. He's very prideful. He's technically judgmental. Yeah, he's just kind of a butt. And you know, throughout the book, basically a lot of just stuff that goes on. And basically Jane and Bingley, they're having their own little side romance there. And then Elizabeth and Darcy have their own little romance thing, except there's like, they're like up and down with it because it's just so weird. Don't know why they ended up together. I'm not gonna spoil it. I mean, unless it, I don't know if it says it in the summary or makes it clear that Darcy and Elizabeth should end up together, but you know, if they do, sorry for that spoiler. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it says it in the description summary thingy in here, so it's okay. They end up together, and I don't like that, because, like, it's an enemies to lovers, but it's not a good one, because by the end of it, I didn't see the reason that they would love each other at all. So, yeah, it's kind of just like a, a switch gets flipped. <laughs> Excuse me. Um... Sorry, it's sort of like a switch gets flipped and they just love each other all of a sudden and I'm like, what? So I don't really ship that. Maybe if there was more reasoning behind them falling in love. Like, I see the reason, but I didn't see it as a good one. So, me personally, just my personal input on that. So, yeah, those were my thoughts on Pride and Prejudice. Comment down below if you like this book, because I like seeing if people like this or not, because there's a broad range. It's sort of like you hate it or you don't, and I kind of fall in the middle, which is strange, because it's just one of those books where it's like, a lot of people hate it, but, like, readers, most readers, I find, usually enjoy it. Most. Some don't. I'm not saying you're not a reader because you didn't enjoy Pride and Prejudice prejudice but I kind of fall in the middle which is unusual from what I've seen at least so those were the nine technically eight and a half books that I read in March of 2024 I hope you all enjoyed this video if you did press the like button and subscribe and I will see you all in my next video peace